Welcome to the tutorial for MI Spring Arm Component. If you go Add Component and you type Spring, you notice you have two options. And all of these three here just use a regular Spring Arm Component, but the Adventure Boom uses MI Spring Arm Component. I'm going to show you what it lets you do. So the normal camera, you move left or right, but with the Adventure Cam camera, you move left or right. And it orbits. It orbits partially when you move diagonally. And of course, if you have a controller, how much it moves based on how much you're moving forward versus how much you're moving right is a factor. Also, when you move towards the camera, I've got an option to make it not orbit. When I jump, the camera doesn't move. If I jump up onto something, Then the camera moves after the landing. And finally, if I press the up arrow, press the down arrow. So smooth zoom based on input. And then if I orbit upward, orbit downward, you'll notice when I orbit down, it gets real close to the character. The camera gets real close. So here are the settings for this, and we're just going to go through them. There are two instances where I disable the orbit and where I enable it, and by default it's disabled. It's dif disabled by default because this is not the default camera. This orbit option actually affects every camera. And that may not be desirable, so you just switch it off when you use a different camera. And that's because it uses the controller input. And, um, so the forward and right input axis names here. You go to your project settings, input, axis mappings. You see I move forward, move right, move forward, move right. So it knows what access I'm inputting. So scale by move forward input. If I disable this, what it means, so if I move left and right, I get full orbit. If I move diagonal, I'm still getting full orbit. When it's only when I move only forward that I'm not getting any orbit. That's because by default it scales by the forward input. Um, Orbit when moving forward, enabled by default. Orbit when moving backwards, disabled by default. Pretty self-explanatory. It's what I showed before. When you move towards the camera, it doesn't orbit. You move away, it does. If you change these options, it will change that behavior. We can have orbit when moving backwards. And now it orbits, regardless of direction. So the walk forward multiplier should never be below one, ideally. Otherwise, it's just going to go backwards. So if I set this to say, I don't know, 20, it will change the amount of influence from walking forward. So by setting it to 20, I've got a ton of influence. It's about the same as when you walk left and right. It's pretty much the same as using this option here. But if I just set it to maybe two, still getting quite a lot, but it's not full at two. It's nearly full, so maybe 1.5. Still getting quite a lot of input when we're moving diagonally, but not full input. That's how you change that. Same option for walk backward if you haven't enabled. Orbit rate, it's at 15. Let's just set it to say 100 and watch what happens. He moves in a circle. And if I scale it with a forward input, he moves in a wider circle. So you could just have a, maybe a subtle effect, maybe more like 10 instead of 15. Still a bit of orbiting going on. Let me put it where you can see the 
markers, but now it's more subtle. And we have these two options, orbit rate, orbit interpret, with input, no input. So if I set this to say, I don't know, 15 in 1, you're going to get a lot of orbiting when you're moving, but when you stop, it's going to really slowly ease in. And the inverse is more or less true as well. Okay, that's it for orbit. Now we're moving on to the static jump. We need the event on jump, event on landed that comes with the character, and we plug them into the event adventure boom on character jump, on character landed. You notice here's a Z lag speed. If I set this to maybe two, and we also use an option, draw landing lag state. So if you look for orange text here that says landing, right there. When I jump up on something and it's lagging, see that? It disappears once the lag completes. Once that disappears, it means we're using the default camera lag. You can disable the camera lag fully if you want. So now when I move around, there's no camera lag whatsoever. You remain centered, jump up. And we still get that landing lag. So 10 is a good snappy value without being too fast. If I do 15, it's really fast. Which might be the right answer if you're doing a fast paced game where you really just need that camera to catch up. But 10 is a really good value to work from. Now the reason it's on a node instead of a setting here, is so that you can change this lag speed based on something that's just happened. Like, did he just activate an ability that causes him to jump and you want it to catch up really slowly to while he's stunned after the effect? Something like that. Or if he's stunned and he falls, it doesn't need to catch up that quickly if you can't move. And it just gives you the option to drive this with logic instead of a flat setting. Okay, moving on. Zoom enabled. By default, there's input and curve. We've got our curve here, and it's based on the pitch. We also have a min and max target length, which is self-explanatory. That's a default. It's a minimum. That's a maximum. So if I just go play. So if you look at the node here, Step size 100, zoom rate 10. It's going to move 100. That's a target arm length. It's 100 shorter. And it moved at, a, at the given rate. Now if I go backwards, it moves slower, but it moves 150 units. So you can set whatever you want there. And again, they're exposed, so you can drive them by gameplay or whatever state your character's in, however you wish. Or, yeah. Or you could do it based on which camera is active. Okay, so the other thing is when I zoom like this, it's, it's instant, it keeps up with it. And that's usually the nicest effect. But if I say set the zoom curve rate to 10, there's a delay. To be honest, the delay doesn't feel very good, but if for some reason you want that option, it exists. So at negative 45, it's at 0.1. That makes it go real close when you go to negative 45. And at 45, it's at 1.5, so it's real far away. So we could say 0.05. And it just gets real close, real quick. Pretty self-explanatory. And that's it for the MI Spring Arm component. Gives you all the functionality to make Mario Odyssey in a nutshell. <laughs> I look, well, there's a plenty of other movement settings, but from a camera perspective, this is what it does. All right, thank you.